So welcome back. This video is about the sixth seal. If you haven't watched the previous seals, I highly recommend it. Although you can watch this now, go back and watch the Revelation 12 sign video, uh, seals one, two, three, four, and five, and then watch this one again. And by watching it in a sequential order, uh, you'll gain a lot of information, which will make this one more informative and enjoyable. So let's get into this. So six seal is actually five, uh, sorry, six moon cycles after uh, the fifth seal. So six moons after the fifth seal, we're into the sixth seal. And it happens to land on November 8th, 2022 at 6 a.m. So another six, note, six moons, 6 a.m. So it also falls on uh, that day was the U.S. Uh, election day. That's, I don't know what bearing that has on all this, if it has any at all, but it's just a uh, noteworthy, that's all. So I want to read uh, Revelation here, chapter 6, verses 12 to 17. It says, I beheld when he opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. The stars of heaven fell onto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled up together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. And said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? So, there's a lot there, and believe it or not, a lot of it is going to be shown. And uh, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll go right into Stellarium and have a look at it. So we'll pick up where we left off from last time, which was in the fifth seal. And it was a blood moon in the scales, or the balances, or the altar. And we will click on the moon, and we will follow that to the next destination, which is the ram, the male lamb. So we're going to center on the ram. And so that wasn't uh, a complete cycle of the moon. So we're going to start counting now. And it will be six moons from this point. So we have one moon cycle. There's two. Three. Four, five, and six. So we'll go forward in time. It's the blood moon is at 6 a.m. almost. Uh, it's the 6 a.m. is the peak of it. It, it uh, it's the darkest red at 6 a.m. So we'll just go forward until we get to there. And, and we're there. Okay, so we're at the peak of the blood moon and it's in in the uh, the ram. So I just want to read that um, chapter 6 and verse 16. And said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. So this matches the scripture with the, the the lamb, the male, the male lamb, and it's, it's telling us a story. Um, six moon cycles ago, it was in the balances or the altar, and then six moons later, we have another blood moon. So back to back blood moons, and we have the altar, and then we have a ram, the male lamb, and this brings up a couple stories. We have Abraham and Isaac, and he. Isaac says, where's the sacrifice? He says, God will provide it. And in 
the thicket was the ram. And then we have Jesus as, as a sacrifice as well. And he is the Lamb of God. So it's telling a couple of stories here. It's, it's quite amazing. And so along with the story, we have, there is more scriptures in this scriptures to, uh, to look at. There's, it's a lot, a lot of information. There was an earthquake mentioned, so I just want to show you on November 8, 2022. There was indeed an earthquake. It says six dead after earthquake hits Nepal. It was a magnitude 6.6, .6, and it struck the western Nepal at about 2 a.m. And uh, it was 2 a.m. on November 9th there, but Jerusalem time, it was 2 a.m. Jerusalem time is 11.15, and you can also check it here, two, two hours and 45 minute difference. So it was like 11 p.m. in Jerusalem. So another news article, six dead after powerful earthquake hits Nepal. And earthquake of magnitude of 6.6 .6 struck Nepal early Wednesday, killing at least six people. And another news article, magnitude 6.6 .6 earthquake strikes Nepal, leveling homes and shaking New Delhi. And this earthquake... Um, the situation that where it's situated, I just want to show you. It's right here. It's situated between the two greatest populous countries uh, in the world, uh, close to three billion people total, which is just shy of half the population of Earth. Uh, Forty-two million people felt this earthquake when it went. And we'll go to. Uh, yeah, right here. The earthquake was felt by over 42.1 million people across Nepal, India, and China. The earthquake occurred as a result of reverse faulting. It was felt as far away as the Indian capital of New Delhi, approximately 400 kilometers away. And this is... I'll just play a little bit of this video clip. Uh, not much of it. Meanwhile, a powerful earthquake of 6.6 .6 magnitude on the Richter scale struck Nepal. And according to reports that have come in, at least about six people have lost their lives so far. But the National Seismological Center in Nepal has said that the earthquake happened roughly at about 2.12 a.m. with its epicenter in a place called Kaptar National Park in the Doti district. Media reports state that the quake tremors were also felt in the northern part of India, including in India's national capital, New Delhi. Now, according to officials, the earthquake destroyed multiple homes in the western district of Dhoti in Nepal. The deputy superintendent of police has confirmed that at least about five people are said to be seriously injured and eight homes have been destroyed. And Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Dioba has offered condolences to the families of the deceased. Through Twitter, he also wrote that he has instructed the relevant agencies to arrange for immediate and proper treatment of the injured and the victims. Now, the spokesman for the Nepal, Nepalese army has said that the ground rescue teams have been rushed to the site. Two helicopters are also on standby in nearby Surkhet. And so that was just a clip of it. So we have the earthquakes in the in the scriptures, uh, what it, when it, where it mentions that. And I'll just uh, quickly uh, read read it read that part. And it said, um, "Am I beheld when?" He opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. So that, too, has been uh, shown, and it's really, really uh, weird. 6.6 <laughs> quake and 6 killed on the sixth seal. So, falling stars. We have this torrid meteor on November 8, 2022. More than 100 people reported seeing a fireball streak across the sky in the northeastern United States on Tuesday, November 8. NASA Meteor Watch said in a Facebook post known as a torrid meteor, it was first spotted at 7.37 p.m. over Salem, Massachusetts. So we have a fireball streak. So there's another element to this that I want to show you. I mean, it's a pretty big deal. And I'm going to zoom in because we have something new. Something new that we haven't had in the other seals. And that is 
a new luminary, an eighth luminary. We've been looking at all these with the naked eye, the seven luminaries that you can see with the naked eye. This is the eighth luminary, and it cannot be seen with the naked eye. You usually need help with binoculars or a telescope to see this one. It is, um, the magnitude is 5.64, and normally the naked eye you can only pick up of 4.5. There's a few people around that can actually see further than that, but not many. So Uranus. Let's look up the origin and the word Uranus. It's from Latin. Uranus from the Greek. Uranos, literally heaven, the sky. And Greek. The surname Uranos is derived from the Greek word meaning heaven. So we have Uranus equating heaven in this constellation, the time of the blood moon. And I'm going to read a scripture. Uh, it's chapter 6, verses 14. And it says, And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. The heaven departed. So I'm going to go forward in time while we're zoomed in and we can see Uranus and we'll just go forward in time. And heaven let's keep this keep this centered on the moon. And if Uranus equates heaven and heaven just departed behind the moon. And at the same time, the end of the blood moon is happening. Almost like the precision here is uncanny. And it pops at the other sign. At perfect, perfect timing. So I'm going to play this a few times just to, to grasp the magnitude of this. The heaven departed as a scroll rolling together. It's just... This just, it blew my mind. It, it literally put the fear of God in me when I seen this. Just a how, how, like, the scriptures match this. And, and mind you, I had a lot of preconceived ideas what the sixth seal would look like. I didn't think it would be like this. And, uh, yeah, let's go back one more time. The heaven departed like a scroll rolling together. So this is, in astronomy, we call this an occultation. It's, it's when a, a, a one heavenly body covers another one. And it's the word occult means to hide. It just means to hide. It is hidden. And this is not um, astrology. Astrology is something totally different. And this is just, we're looking at scripture, and we're looking in the heavens, just like Genesis 1.14 where it says he put them in the firmament, the luminaries, for signs and seasons, for days and years. And these are the signs we're looking at. So we're going to go and uh, well, we're going to go and talk about this. So that was amazing. That one really, that one really got to me. It just, it really blew my mind. I just couldn't believe it. The, uh, the amount of precision in uh, seeing the moon cover Uranus and then the fact that as is covering it the the blood moons ending like identical just right off the back and and I'm zoomed in and I'm like I'm zoomed in far there's 360 degrees in a circle and I'm I'm zoomed in with within a degree within one degree in there and we're watching that and uh not just the, within that window but there's there's the ecliptic window okay there's it, it's up and down and the moon could be here, it could be down here, and, and Uranus could be up here or down here. Okay, they they f they float, they fluctuate. Uranus takes 84 years to go around the elliptic. Uh, 12 times 7 is 84, 84 years. So it takes 7 years, goes through each constellation, takes 7 years. It means heaven. It's a lot of um, indicators pointing this but the fact that they, they can fluctuate but the fact that they're 
here and now on the level plane to the point where the moon like occults it, it covers it. And, and at the same time, the blood moon is coming off just as it's falling right off. And that, like, I don't know if I could do an odds on this at all. I just, it, it, it reminds me a lot of the fourth seal with the pale green comet coming through the rider on a horse. It's just one of those wow moments. Like, because I, when I looked at it, I, Seen the blood moon, but it wasn't until I zoomed in, had a better look, and I was like, "Oh boy, look at that! Just unbelievable." So I want, I want, to, I want to talk a little bit um, about Uranus and the number eight. Um, the number eight, and Uranus being the eighth luminary, the number eight means new beginning. There's a lot of indicators when you read God's word and in, in the he in the Hebrew language, and there's a lot of indicators with with um, the number eight, being a new beginning, such as like a week being seven days and the beginning of the next new week would be the eighth day. So that's a new beginning. Noah's Ark, uh, new beginning, eight people, Noah and his wife, his three children and their wives, that's, that's eight people. It's a new beginning. Then you have Uranus, the seven luminaries that you can see with the naked eye. And then this eight is the first one, new beginning that you can't and there's other ones that you can't see with the naked eye um and the eighth letter of hebrew is named chet the name of this name chet and it, it means uh, a chamber uh, a hedge or a fence and each one of those things requires a door you need a door to get into a chamber you need a door to get into a fence you need a doorway to get in through a hedge and jesus is the door no one goes to the father except through jesus so and we're talking about heaven you know we're talking about that theme so it's we have all these indicators here in a theme and it's like telling us a story at the same time it's just displaying some awesomeness like i had a lot of pre preconceived ideas of what the sixth seal was going to be like and i thought it was going to be like absolutely horrific but actually seeing it there's a lot of indicators pointing to a great sign but i also see um a lot of mercy here to all, like it could have been devastating but there is some some mercy it's just like a, it's like a, it is like a warning and it is like tiny like a seed compared to what's to come that's how i feel compared to what's to come these show some foreshadowing of what is to come and that that that's going to be the wrath of the lamb and yeah so i want to read this um uh, one more thing about eights so it's the feast of tabernacles and uh it's celebrated celebrated by the israelites and it's still celebrated by them to to this day it takes place over the course of seven days and uh the day after that there's another feast and the name of that feast is known as the last great day Okay, so that's a total of eight days of celebration. <laughs> the last eight day. Are we getting close? You know, are we getting close? <laughs> so, yeah, this was this was very um, personally. This was this has been a, a very humbling journey because I went looking for a sign of the rapture and end up God leading me to all these seals, and I was a pre-trib guy. And I couldn't ignore these seals, which me being a trip guy means like we're raptured before the seals, but these seals are here. So I was like, okay, so I won't be a pre-trip guy. I'll be a pre-wrath guy. And I thought, well, the, what's the closest, the closest pre-wrath that I could find in the Bible was the sixth seal. Because it's, you know, it's the sooner the better. So the sixth seal was the closest wrath thing and and the six uh is part of the sixth group and i did the other video called revelation unlocked and i go through how each they're all different groups and it's it like it grows it's it's worth a watch i'm going to do more um i'm going to end up making that one a bit of a series and i'll i'll, I'll do uh a more in-depth study of the book of revelation i'll talk about it but uh yeah so where am i where do i stand on the rapture now i stand um seventh trumpet or the last trump and uh i'm gonna have to continue to study the scriptures to so yeah seventh 
Trump or last Trump, and uh, that's where I stand for the rapture. And I think that some of the the trumpets might have already be going off when I see like I'm in Canada and I seen these because um, I've I've already found the seventh seal. I'm going to make a video of that. But when I seen these all these forest fires and fires going all, and I, I'm like reading the about the first trumpet, I'm thinking, wow, is it gone? Like <laughs> I feel like I'm playing catch up, trying to catch up to everything but uh, yeah so i'm gonna try and come out with um the seven seal video pretty soon i want to thank everybody for popping by uh, god bless you i love you and until next video